Hello, everybody. This week's read aloud is called Rocks a Boxin. It's written by Alex McLearen, illustrated by Barbara Cooney. As we're reading this story, I want you to think about what is Rocks a Boxin? And what is Rocks a Boxin like? You ready to find out about Rocks a Boxin? Marion called it Rocks a Boxin. She always knew the name of everything. There, across the road, it looked like any rocky hill, nothing but sand and rocks, some old wooden boxes, cactus and greasewood and thorny acatillo, but it was a special place. The street between Rocks of Oxen and the houses curved like a river. So Marion named it River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach Roxaboxen. Now a ford is the most shallow place in a river so you could walk across. Is it really a river? No, it's the road. Of course, all of Marion's sisters came. Anna Mae and Francis and little Jean Charles from next door, even though he was 12. Oh, and Eleanor, naturally. And Jamie with his brother Paul. Later on, there were others. But these were the first. Well, not really the first. Roxa Boxen had always been there and must have belonged to others long before. What do you think it means it must have belonged to others? Do you think other kids played there too? just like this group of friends are? Maybe. When Marion dug up a tin box filled with round block pebbles, everyone knew what it was. It was buried treasure. Those pebbles were the money for rocks of oxen. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. Some days became treasure hunting days with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then other days, you might just find one without even looking. You might be all found some. He's got some, oh wow, he's got one in his hand. A town of Roxaboxen began to grow, traced in lines of stone. What do you mean traced? Anyone ever traced a hand before? It's when you follow the outline. Let's take a look. Can we trace the outline of rocks of boxing? Main Street first, edged with the whitest stones, and then the houses. Charles made his the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first, the houses were very plain, but soon all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find pieces of pottery for dishes. The round pieces were the best. Later on, there was the town hall. Marion was the mayor, of course. That was just the way she was, but nobody minded. There's Marion. Says mayor. After a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built herself a new house outlined in desert glass. There was bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. It was a house of jewels. It's a very nice house she made. And because everybody had plenty of money, there was plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna Mae in the bakery. Pies and cakes and bread baked warm in the sun. There were two ice cream parlors. Was Paul's ice cream the best or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. In Rocks the Boxen, you can eat all the ice cream you want. Love to live in Roxaboxen and eat all the ice cream. Everybody had a car. 
All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. The jail had cactus on the floor, making it uncomfortable. And Janie, he was the policeman. Anna Mae, quiet little Anna Mae, was always speeding. You think she liked going to jail? Look at that jail. Mm. Do they really have cars? No, they're using their imagination. But, aha, uh -huh, if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There was no speed limits for horses and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and some kind of bridle. And then you could gallop anywhere. Giddy up. Sometimes there was wars. Once there was a great war, the boys against the girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene, and they were all Girl Scouts. The boys made the fort on the other end of Roxaboxen, and they were all the bandits. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud with whooping and stomping of horses. Woohoo! Goody up, goody up, goody up, goody up. The whirling swords of Octio had sharp thorns, but when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxaboxen had a cemetery in case anyone died, but the only grave in it was for a dead lizard. Each year, when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave with flowers. Oh, poor lizard. Sometimes in the winter, when everybody was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all. Not for weeks and weeks, but it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there. And spring came and the octio blossomed and everybody sucked the honey from its flowers and everybody built new rooms and everybody decided to have jeweled windows. That summer, there were three new houses on the east slope and two new shops on Main Street. And so it went. The seasons changed and the years went by and Roxaboxen was always there. Do you see the octillo blooming flowers? The years went by and the seasons changed until at last the friends had all grown tall and one by one they moved away to other houses, to other towns. So you might think that that was the end of Rocks of Oxen. But oh no, because none of them ever forgot Rocks of Oxen. Not one ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to stories of a place and fell asleep dreaming dreams of Rocks of Oxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on a beach and he stood there holding it, remembering Roxaboxen. More than 50 years later, Francis went back and Roxaboxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street and there where she had built her house, that desert glass still glowed, amethyst, amber, and sea green. On a hill on a southeast corner on 2nd Avenue and 8th Street in Yuma, Arizona, there is a place once known as Rocks of Boxing. The events in this book really happened to Alice McLearen's mother. 
When the aid of her mother's childhood manuscript, the memories of relatives and the letters and maps from the former inhabitants of Rocks of Oxen, Alex McLearen was able to recreate a magical world as if she had played there herself. She presents us with a celebration of active imagination, of the ability of children to create, even with the most unpromising materials, a world of fantasy so real and multidimensional that it earns a lasting place in our memory. Rocks a box. Now, my question in the beginning was what is rocks a boxin? Yeah, Rocks of Boxen is an imaginary community that the children made up and played with and got along with each other. They had money, remember the black stones? They built houses. It was a great place for them to be themselves as individuals, but work together as a team. Now, why do you suppose it's called Rocks of Boxen? Do you see all the rocks that were there? And what else? There's lots of boxes. How did they make their town? Rocks and boxes. They used a lot of materials they found just walking around. Ooh, this could make a great plate. Ooh, I could use this as my ice cream stand. Ooh, I could pretend I'm making some cakes and pies or warm bread. Mm. Do they really have those things? Mm -mm. Just like they didn't have the cars or the horses, but they do have one thing and that's imagination. I want you to create your own Roxaboxin. What is your Roxaboxin gonna be like? Would you have liked to live in Roxaboxen with these guys? Me too. But you can create your own.